Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Talk Motorsport, powered by Slipstream Autosports, a show where a couple blokes have fun chatting all things motor racing. My name is Daniel and this is Alex and shortly we'll have Ivan with us later. But Alex, how are you mate? Did, how did you enjoy this weekend of racing? Yeah, it was pretty good there. Wasn't a whole lot of action was there, but um, enough to keep us entertained for the for the weekend. Um, some pretty good action, some somewhat boring action, but um, yeah, we'll get into it all. Um, Fair few series had bikes and cars, so yeah, let's get into it. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of action packed stuff, but there is some stories from the weekend, and we will get into it. True. Starting off with MotoGP, um, they traveled to Mugello for the Italian Grand Prix. Yep. Um, how beautiful was the result for that? I loved it. Um, similar to Monaco, though, not much happened, but the results I was happy with. Yeah, similar to the F, similar to the F one. Um. Yeah, it was weird though. For Mugello, it was actually quite a boring, tamed couple of races. Um, obviously, the previous round in Catalonia, we were, we were treated to a fair few crashes and spills and battles, but um, not this time. Uh, like there were a few battles, but nothing really that close. Nothing dramatic. No, nothing real no. close. Um, that uh, caught our attention. But it was an all-dominated weekend by uh, okay. Pekka Pekka Banyai. Yeah, he he dominated the weekend. He smashed it. Um, and yep. to get the um, Ducati one two for the main race as well. Yeah. Uh, with that last lap move, mm-hmm. uh, was very very special as well. So, like I said, we didn't see any epic battles for the lead. No. Um, but still, overall solid weekend and a big news as well coming from the weekend. Pedro Acosta will be re- replacing Jack Miller. Uh, yeah, next year. No surprises. We literally said no. this as a guest last week on the show so um yeah no surprises with uh yeah pedro acosta headed to the red bull ktm factory team um that's pretty much the only news that's happened so far pretty much in motor gp and also the fact that uh actually no before we do that um do you reckon miller deserves a seat next year at all i think it was scramble one it might be with like an lcr honda but you know how like um what's his name uh, Johan Zarco got this year, even though he was pretty done by because he was getting podiums for Pramac last year, and for some reason they replaced him with Franco Morbidelli, who had a pretty good weekend this year, uh, this weekend. But um, yeah, on a whole, I, th- I think he'll stay. I just don't know with who. Mm. He might even get bumped down to uh, the Gas Gas team, Tech Three, probably. Yeah, like kind of like a Daniel Ricciardo situation, mm. you know, going from Red Bull to AlphaTauri, or you know, when Pierre Gasly got bumped. Because it's plain and simple. I know we're Australians. Like, yeah. still, it's plain and simple. He doesn't deserve that seat anymore. No. Um, and Pedro clearly does. He's been getting podiums mm-hmm. um, like he did this weekend. Yep. Um, in the sprint, at least. And yep. Miller, like, if you look at the results here, Binder was in the top 10 for the Grand Prix, whereas I think Miller finished 16th, um, just for yep. comparison. And that's where he stayed pretty much all weekend, actually. I must admit, though, he qualified worse. So he got really good starts in both the sprint and the Grand Prix. Mm. Um, but obviously the, his qualifying was pretty shocking. I'm pretty sure he qualified 17th. Yeah, about there. Somewhere. Yeah, unfortunately the MotoGP splits up their grid, but doesn't do a combined thing. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure he started 17th and in the sprint he finished 12th, which isn't too bad. And then in the race he finished up, where are we here? 16th. 16th. At least he didn't crash. Yeah. Yeah, he stayed Unlike on the last bike. Time. <laughs> yeah, he stayed on the bike, so which was a thing. which was a good surprise. Um, yeah, unfortunately, he's probably on his way out of. Uh, I don't think he's out of MotoGP. I just his story to get into MotoGP was pretty interesting too. Mm. He skipped Moto Two at the time; he was the first rider to do that. He went from Moto Three straight to MotoGP, and at the start, it was like, yeah, that wasn't a good call. Mm. And then at one point in his career, he won a few races for the worst team, the Mark VDS team. Back in the day, and um, yeah, somehow got on a Pramac Ducati and then back to Ducati, and the rest is history. And now I think we're going back to the beginning again, yeah, <laughs> kind of full circle, yeah. Except deal. I don't think he will be probably winning in a no lower, well, yeah, he's but, good at Phillip Island, that's yeah, probably about it. Did he it. win there last year? I don't know, no, I he can't didn't remember. Um, yeah, too much stuff going on, but um, other news as well, it's not really news, but what did you think of um, Ducati's blue livery? Better um, than the Ferrari one. Way better. Because it was actually blue. <laughs> yeah, they weren't lying. Um, I actually didn't even... I, 
honestly, the first lap, because I completely forgot that they were blue. Mm. And because in the sprint, they didn't run the blue, they ran the red. Yeah. Which caught me off guard. And so I thought it was like Raul Fernandez or one of the Aprilia <laughs> riders leading the race. I'm like, oh my God, Aprilia's winning. And then I said, Banyo, I'm like, never mind, they're blue. Yeah. I was exactly the same. That's what I put in the group chat. I was like, damn, we haven't spoken about it. No. I was trying to hint at it, but I was like, I felt like I missed something. I was like, where no, are they? But it was, it was a pretty good blue livery, I thought. Like, it wasn't. It wasn't terrible. No, way better than the Scuderia Ferrari. Yeah. Um, at least. Where we've got red stripes, but with the Ferrari, you just had blue stripes on the red car. Yeah. It didn't look it was a, near as good. It was an Azuri blue. Yeah. Which meant they kind of copied the, the soccer team. They're mm. blue. Same thing as there was. Ferrari went. Well, we don't know where the hell they Did went. Did they go anywhere? They they went all yeah, let's not talk about Let, that. Let's move on. We're still it's traumatized. Giving me nightmares. Um, anyway, the uh, results from the weekend. Um go through the sprint first. That was actually quite an enjoyable sprint race. That was good. Um, there was a bit of action. Actually, more action in that than the Grand Prix. It was a nice little battle with um, Marquez and uh, Martin. I think Martin. Yeah, um, and Acosta. But similar story each time. Marquez just, he has that pace, but he always gets stuck behind. Well, actually, surprisingly, this weekend, it didn't look as dominant as he did no. in Catalonia. Like, Catalonia, he qualified 14th oh, he was... and came second and third. I think definitely and for two seconds and that start with bagnaya the the grand prix yeah he uh, dominated he went from what i can't remember where he started Sec oh he started second in the sprint and then fifth fifth yeah, yeah. So and, he had the penalty and then uh basically after turn two or turn yeah, three it he didn't was make leading. a difference no he was gone <laughs> that lasted a long time yeah, yeah well yeah if you watch the replay he actually clawed his way through the the uh the, the field pretty pretty easily Honestly, like he did not struggle at all when they ran around the outside of turn one and inside of turn two, and that was it. No one ever saw him again. Similar to Ayrton Senna and uh, Donington, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. But um, yeah, Ma Martin qualified first, although there's, I know Marquez was on a quick lap, and unfortunately he had a crash in his last last run. But um, yeah. We go, anyway, we'll go through the results. Um. Yeah, Pekka Banyai won the sprint and the Grand Prix. Uh, in the sprint uh, results, Marquez came second, Acosta third. The rookie keeps going on. Uh, Franco Morbidelli, who I mentioned before, he had a pretty good weekend, to be honest, uh, on the Pramac Ducati. Obviously, he finished higher than his teammate because he uh, unfortunately crashed out. Mm. Maverick Vinales fifth. Uh, Brad Bender sixth. He uh, had a lot of good pace at the start and then fell way down uh, in, in, in times. Uh, Fabio Di Gentono, uh, seventh. Uh, Alex Marquez, eighth. Uh, Leisha Spargo, ninth. Raul Fernandez running up the top 10. Uh, Marco Bensecchi continues to struggle, unfortunately. Uh, in 11th, Jack Miller, we mentioned before, in 12th. Alex Rins, who actually had good qualifying pace, and they were actually in the top 10 in practice, the Yamahas, which was a shock. Oh, yeah, right. And then didn't do anything in the race. Um, Paula Spargo, who was a wild card uh, for the KTM. Uh, Red Bull team uh, came 14th. Uh, Johan Zarco, 15th. Taka Nabagami, 16th. Uh, Augusto Fernandez, 17th. Uh, another wild card, uh, Salvadori. Uh, he was 18th. And Luca Marini was the last finisher on his Repsol Honda. Had a fair few crashes, actually. Yeah. I'd, in this. To uh, be honest, I didn't even them. see them crash. Yeah, well, the, I must admit, we'll go by order of crashes at, at the bottom of the list here. Fabio Quattararo and um, Miguel Oliveira crashed on lap one, I think, lap two. Um, yeah, lap one. And uh, there was quite a clumsy crash. Uh, Oliveira went for the pass. Quattararo didn't know he was there. That's right, yep. And took both each other out. Sebastianini, he, oh, he got, he collided with... Uh, Mark Marquez, didn't he? No, no, Martin. Oh, Martin, yeah, yeah. Yeah, did the over and under and then went under, yeah. Didn't it didn't end well? Well, the roles were reversed. Yeah, did the same move <laughs> the, the next day. day. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, uh, Mir, you and Mir, I think he had a technical difficulty because he didn't crash. He retired, and then uh, yeah, Jorge Martin crashed at turn one. He was coming in hot, mm. like he was way too fast in that corner. It was never ever ever gonna make it. Um, he only had seven laps of the race, but um. Yeah, moving on to the Grand Prix. Let's have a look at the Similar story. top 10. Because, um, no, probably, yeah, top 10. All right, done. Um, Pekka Banyai won again from fifth in the grid. 
and then Bastianini second, Jorge Martin third, ran out the podium. On the last lap, they swapped positions. So that was a pretty cool battle. That was a cool move. Yeah. Uh, Mark Marquez fourth. Uh, Pedro Costa had a very lonely fifth. Uh, same for Franco Morbidelli in sixth. Fabio Di Antonio seventh. Maverick Vinales eighth. Ninth was Alex Marquez and running out the top 10. Uh, Brad Binder. 